What's that coming around the hill? It's a manned aircraft. If you're serious about your droning, you're going to have to play with the ADS-B receivers. To some extent, it will be part of UTMs, that's Unmanned Traffic Management Systems, that are being tested all over the world right now. They're currently the thing of the moment. A working knowledge of what it looks like, then, is a good idea. From 2020, the FAA and other aviation authorities have mandated that uh, manned aircraft need to be fitted with ADS-B should they fly in certain sorts of airspace. So to be able to track ADS-B traffic is going to be a more useful, not less useful thing. It need not cost a fortune. Um, I personally recommend the 20 something dollar Flight Aware Pro Stick Plus. It's got filters, it's on the frequency, all, all sorts of good things. It's a great receiver. And if you really want to push the boat out, you can go for a $125 ping USB, and that'll do the same thing. Um, it, that does actually have a limitation in that you can't change the antenna, so you, 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 you can't play around with improving the range and the thing. Why should you bother to receive real time ADSB? When you can just use an app uh, on your cell phone and, and see those aircraft. The trouble is those apps are time delayed and you need an internet connection for, to, for them to work. And the data is not shown on the ground control station you might be using of course. So you're not seeing aircraft in relation to your drone in real time. You're looking at between your phone and your ground control station. It's not in the data, it's not in the same place. And lastly, not all aircraft are shown on the apps. Some are filtered out. We still wouldn't want to hit those, so we better get our own data. I'm not going to detail how to set up the receiver parts. There's more than enough information out there on the interwebs, but they're effectively plug and play. Once you have your system working, you can feed those apps that we talked about before and help people waiting at the airport with their families. With a team of friends, you can create your own internet-based local real-time solution. Multiple receivers placed all over the place can allow you to look down valleys and around mountains. The further away you can see the traffic, the more time you have to plan and react. If your base stations are feeding one of those app providers, you can pull back from their multilaterated positions into your local system for one sort of uh, transponder traffic, mode S traffic. Again, I'm not going to detail all about that. Just, just let Google be your friend there. Look for multilateration. This method, of course, if you're feeding and then crunching data into one point requires an internet connection at the point that you're going to use the data. That said, the good people at RG Pilot and Michael Oborn and Mission Planner and his ground control station have made adding ADSB data trivial uh, onto Mission Planner. All you have to do is open the config tuning, then tick the little ADSB checkbox and enter the IP address of your local receiver or the group of friends where you're pushing it all together, bringing it all together. It really is that simple. Further to that, RG Pilot developer Randy McKay has been testing a, a running away algorithm currently in simulation that if you have an airframe fitted with a ping receiver and it sees a manned aircraft within 300 meters of itself, it'll do exactly what that name suggests. It'll run away. It'll try and land, fly away, do whatever to get out of the way of that aircraft. That's going to develop. It's going to be standard. It comes with a Matrice Sem 200, comes with ADS-B from ping now. Uh, any Pixhawk aircraft can have ADS-B put in quite simply. So it's time to start getting familiar with ADS-B.